Hi everyone, I'm Alex. How are you? Oh, you're so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> um, today I want to talk about distributed monolith. It's a cool technique that I developed myself. That's of course a joke. <laughs> uh, I'm not really love distributed monoliths, but uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk a bit about me. I'm a shipping lead in Shopify. Shopify is like small e-commerce system. We do some stuff there. Um, I'm husband, and I, I tend to say that I'm cat owner, but I'm not owner of him. Uh, he's more like owner of me and my wife and everyone else that they get there. Um, Shopify is an e-commerce as I said. We serve roughly around half a million of people, merchants that sell stuff. They sell stuff from everywhere, Pinterest, Facebook, Etsy, Amazon, Wish.com, like you name it. There's like hundreds of channels right now. We double each year and uh, we process around one million of dollars each minute. Um, and it's, it's kind of big. So you can imagine the application that serves that it's also not the small piece of a cake. Uh, it roughly was merged around 150,000 PRs by this, but today. Is any, anyone knows GitHub? Everyone knows GitHub? I don't know, maybe some of you don't. It's around, we merge around 200 PRs each day. It's for 13 years in development, and it's around 2,000 people working on the code base. And it's one code base. It's like one code base. There's a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the, it's, It was developed for a long time. Uh, and when you think about it, you think about it as a majestic monolith. It's like something that glorifies and like shows you the path in a way. But in fact, a lot of us think, and it's in fact it became something like this. Uh, and uh, it's often also goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, the lot, and the problem is that, that there is so many domains and so many business contexts inside. And all those business contexts, they have their own dependencies, their own business requirements, their own decisions that was made until any point of time or timeline of the existence of a project. And some of dependencies tend to burn, they tend to fall off, they tend to break, they tend to do whatever they like to do. Those dependencies, I don't like them. Uh, so we decided to try and uh, find the solution how we can slice up the business context. But it's a huge app, people like, it's a running train. It's not a train, it's running rocket. And when you try to change components and run rocket, it could end up badly. If you will try to replace rocket with another rocket, it will also end up badly because you will be spend millions of dollars in development and it's still won't, not going to fly. Uh, and of course, everyone knows this meme, right? Uh, I also can assume that there is like lots of other shit goes between shits. So. <laughs> <laughs> because if you don't know how to slice it, and in none of the person, we have around like 2,000 people that working on a code base. Not a single person knows the application entirely from A to B. It's impossible to know what each and every team works in details. You can make, you know the top level overview of the thing, but you're not sure exactly that it works correctly or not. Uh, what other techniques you can apply? You can try to improve the code base by one of the techniques that I often use, it's churn, churn versus quality. Everyone knows what churn is? So churn is, uh, I, I see only one person saying yes. Everyone like, no. <laughs> so churn is um, it's the frequency of the, how often, it's basically how often you change each individual file. It of course doesn't say you anything super specific, is it bad file or not, but if you compare the quality and quality, you, could com com you can compute the quality of each individual class or module by lots of other techniques that there are market, like cyclomatic complexity, uh, length of their methods and um, like around amount of arguments that your method accept and everything else. So you, compa you c compare the complexity of the class with the amount of time that you change this class and gives you roughly an idea if this class is bad or not. If it's super complex and you change it a lot of times, this indicates that it could be really bad for you if you screw up stuff in it. But on a huge system, it's, it would, it's not going to work because system is growing so fast and there are so many dependencies that you don't see right now. Even if you slice it up and you see if you move files around, it won't help you. So you need to, to split up in the business context with your own dependencies so people and teams can manage them independently. And uh, according to Metcalf law, you also want to do it right because Metcalf law says 
that complexity of a system is not only proportional over the sum of the complexity of each individual parts, but it's also a complexity of the connection that you have between those systems. So if you have a lot of connection between your subsystem, you're basically making a distributed monolith. This thing that no one's like. And if you events holding the business logic that you send between those components, you, you start losing the track where the saga starts and where the saga ends, if you know the saga pattern. But other than that, you're, like, you're just sending too much stuff and you're again losing the context how everything works. So for that, we take a look on the whole application where all the files were in the same folders. And the first step for us was trying to define those con contexts, those business contexts the team working on, and try to split them up and, and move them around. And the first phase was actually to move, basically take a file and move it in the de dedicated folder. Nothing else. You just take a file, move it in the folder as best as you can, but the conceptually, the whole application doesn't change. It was working as before. You don't move anything around. You don't create any new services and microservices. Nothing like that. You just move files around. People were a bit freaked out because of that. <laughs> but it was the first stage. First stage when the teams can start now taking ownership of the components. Say like, oh, I was working on that. I was working on it. No, I was working on it. So they can, they can decide what is the best works for them and make an ownership of the particular part of the system. This way, each individual team will take a stewardship and ownership for the component that they're working on. And this way, you can refine, refine your, 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 your domain, as you, as you may say. You refine domain by the teams that are working on a domain, not by the person who stands on top and decides, now you take this and go away. I don't want to see this, this part of the application in my system. So teams itself, themselves, they make a decisions negotiating between each other and taking ownership of the, of the piece of the software. So you parallelize work between 2,000 of employees. You basically give them tools and saying like, here is how you can, you can build the, the business context and make sure that you're taking ownership of this context. And uh, you also need to provide them tools how they can see if there is any dependencies inside, something simple and something powerful. So you build those contexts, you define the context, and you say there is a dependency that you have between your business context with other contexts that are already in a system. Because these files, these files, these technical classes, they, they lay in different folders. So you can, you can check when the call, method call from one folder goes to another folder. By checking that, you can say that you're crossing the business context. And you can refine it. You can take the business context inside of your component, or you can define another business context and take ownership of it. So it helps you out to define what to do. And you can also build the graph of dependencies between your, your business context with other business contexts and further refine your business context. This way, you can eventually, by defining the, strengths, the strong boundaries between the components, you can understand that this component actually has only one dependency to another component, and it's the, this dependency is loosely coupled. So you can take the component out of the monolith and put it in microservice and start decoupling those big, big chunks of code one by one. Eventually, you will come up with a microservice architecture that you want to, where they will be loosely coupled between themselves, and you can build them in any way that you like. Thank you. Join us and uh, steam. <laughs>